so this time around, I ran the OC half marathon in 2023. And this was not the full marathon. This is a half marathon, so 13.1 miles. And the course was basically taking place at the start line at Newport Beach uh, at Fashion Island. And the course would basically take us all the way down to Costa Mesa. The start line was the same as the marathon, which was also happening at the same time, just an earlier start time. Um, so basically I woke up early, woke up around, I think it was four, uh, drove down to Fashion Island, got there around 5.30 is where I got to the start line. But I was basically dropped off at some random location. I thought the logistics of the whole OC half marathon to marathon of driving there and getting dropped off was kind of wonk. I uh, wasn't sure where I could have been dropping off, so I think my brother and I just, you know, stopped at some random roundabout location and I was dropped off there. And then my brother and I did a swappy swap in terms of car driving, so he'll be able to drive and take my car all the way to the finish line while I'll start at Fashion Island for the run. So I got to the start line, did my daily routine of going pee went pee and then essentially just waited for the half marathon to start. The marathon started first, they had two waves, they started earlier and then once they left, the half marathon group which was me and everyone else lined up at the start line. I was in Corral 1 um, and when I got to Corral 1 I thought everyone pretty much had pretty legit gear they all looked pretty legit they had singlets they had those short shorts they had some nice race shoes on so i thought it was pretty unique uh being a part of that and i did see someone that was a little bit more casual than me he definitely reminded me a little bit more of those casual runners his and you know no no flame to him but he looked a lot more casual he didn't look like he was going for pr he was just looking to be there to have fun, which is good as well. But you know, seeing that type of person at the front where everyone's you know stretching, jumping up and down and getting ready for the race, uh, attempting a PR or placement in the race, just seeing him in there, just <laughs> that was a funny image to see. So hopefully he had fun at the end of the day and you know got the time that he wanted. I essentially started the race pretty strong. Um, I think going to this OC half marathon, I was attempting the PR. I was trying to get a sub 130 one hour 30 minute time which would equate to about a 650 minute per mile. So I was essentially training for that throughout you know weeks prior to this race and so going into this race I was attempting to PR that. My last PR was around a, an hour and 32 or 33 minutes that occurred during training of my, my LA marathon. So doing this at the OC half marathon was my way of, you know, formally putting a PR on the board in terms of my race stats. So that, that was my goal. Um, but when the race started, my thought was, I guess, wasn't as strict as I thought it'd be. I was a lot more loose in terms of sticking to the time I know I was, I was supposed to be at least 650 minute per mile but when I started I felt like I felt good so I you can see in my Strava um, let me pull it up so in my Strava it essentially said the first six miles was at you know a pretty much a 630 pace <laughs> so 20 20 seconds faster than the anticipated 650 time that I was supposed to gun for. And the reason why I decided to do the, I guess, stick to the 630 pace in the beginning is because I feel like I, I think I've come to a point where I think half marathons are relatively shorter. So I know that by the time I you know, feel the regret of putting so much effort in the beginning of the race, I feel like I am able to just suffer a little bit more for the remainder of the race. 
so when I had that realization of feeling regret of you know going so strong in the beginning and then later in the race I just feel all burnt out I feel like by the time I feel like that oh I'll probably only have around three or four miles left which I think I could suffer for the remainder of the time so I thought it was worth the risk of maintaining that 630 pace in the beginning rather than sticking to that 650 time so normally in a marathon let's say it's a longer longer race which is a marathon I would stick more to the race strategy because I don't know how my body would be later down the race but this time around I think I know how my body would react and how I'd be able to manage so I thought it was worth going with my feelings or going with how I felt it felt good so I, I kind of went with that and I didn't stick to the 650 time and essentially I passed the 5k mark at around 20 minute and 25 seconds around there and then the 10k mark was around 40 40 minutes and 40 something seconds so that was actually my 10k PR <laughs> as well uh, so that's that's good that was nice um, but after that essentially I took my first gel my first and only gel which was a Morton gel that gave me pretty much the boost I needed for the rest of the race then at mile 7 there was the first hill or the first incline that that was part of the course Interesting and narrow cloverleaf takes you under the bridge at mile 7 on PCH and the first hill of the course awaits you as you make your way up Dover Drive and essentially my Man, I keep using the word essentially. Bench, uh, yeah, I'll say essentially the same. Essentially, it was at seven, mile seven that the, the hill came. So my time eventually dropped down to around 650, 640s. Throughout the rest of the race, I was averaging around the 640 pace. And then at the very last mile, I gunned it and put in actually my quickest mile of the race was which was around 617 um, so that was my last spurt of the race and then I think I finished with the time of around 126 which was you know well past my anticipated half marathon PR attempt I think also at the very last few miles last three miles 5k or so I feel like my body wanted to cramp up or my legs wanted to cramp up and that was and that rarely happens luckily I don't tend to cramp up during races and for me to start feeling this feeling I thought it was pretty scary because I was doing so well and for me to cramp up now means that all that that I did in the beginning was was would be down to waste so luckily that didn't happen and I was able to push through um, past the last 5k without cramping and even doing my quickest quickest mile. But once I finished my brother was at the finish line to meet me and though he missed me running past him he was holding my camera trying to film me. He's going 14 minutes in. And again, we've had them for many, many years. <laughs> so I thought it was funny, but overall, I'm still very grateful that he was there to cheer me on at the end. From Costa Mesa, Eric brought his muscles today. We got Alvin Ma, Zach Wahlberger from Flagstaff. So I finished 71st overall out of 70, around 7,400 people, 66 male. 30th, 13th in my age group so I think there was 
a lot of fast runners, but overall a very solid race if you're really looking for, I guess, a PR or if this is your first half marathon that you want to, you know, check off that bucket list. Yeah. Woo! Woo! A lot of fast people though. Yeah, I think you're around like 40 or 50th. Yeah, there's so I'll like, many times. Dude, what the It was very solid, not too complicated, not too hilly, not too steep as well. I think it was a very solid effort. So not too hard and not too easy as well. So if you're looking to do a half marathon, your first half marathon, I think this is probably a good marath half marathon to do and even and PRs as well. Um, after the race, we did stick around a little bit more just to cheer on some of the remaining half marathon and marathon finishers since they ended at the same end point in Costa Mesa in the OC Fair area. Oh, and then my heart rate throughout the race. So if you look back at my Strava, uh, my heart rate <laughs> during the race, it, it's set. So I wear an Apple Watch for my runs. My heart rate throughout the race, it said my average was about 180 BPM, which <laughs> I think is high, definitely high. I think I would say I would f I was feeling around 160 or even 170 is a heart rate, but you'll see that, you know, in the beginning I started off with 160, which I think is pretty accurate, but throughout i guess it says mile 5 to mile 13 i was always within around that 180 mark which definitely did not feel like that i felt good <laughs> I, I think i'd say it, it would vary between 160s and even maybe the low 170s and then you'll see at the last 0.1 miles it even went up to 190s uh so highly doubt that was a hurry i hope not <laughs> so it's pretty high for what for why I felt so anyways but that was my heart rate but yeah so that pretty much wraps up the OC race weekend I did run a 5k prior to this half marathon so I consider this the OC weekend I PR'd that as well so it was very a PR weekend I'd, I'd call it at the OC, at Orange County races so fun fun weekend and my next race I look to do will be in San Francisco in July. It will be a marathon this time around. No big plans in terms of time. I just, I guess this time I just want to make sure I have fun, soak in all the vibes and just complete the race without stopping. So training will still be involved, just not, I guess, a, an intensive training plan um, because I'm not really aiming for a particular time look forward to that and hopefully this time during that race i'll get better footage and i'll be able to capture more of the race vibes for everyone to see in the next video so thanks for watching if you made it this far and i'll see you at the sf marathon bye bye